In the opening scene, we are introduced to a nursery school teacher, Jenny Greengrass, who works at a local daycare. After finishing the classes on Friday, Jenny is picked up by her boyfriend, Steve Taylor, and the two immediately set off for a romantic outing. Turns out they are planning to spend the weekend away at a remote lake in the English countryside, where Steve plans to propose. It's clearly a long ride, and the sun sets before they can reach their destination. As a result, they decide to stop by a motel and spend a night there. The next day, they arrive at their destination, Eden Lake, a gated community in the middle of the woods. The duo park their vehicle in the woods and continue the rest of their journey on foot. After a short walk, they finally come across a majestic view overlooking the whole town. As they make their way down to the lake, they encounter a young, timid boy named Adam, who is collecting insects in his container. Jenny approaches him and tries to strike up a conversation, but the boy refuses to talk, addressing them as strangers. I don't know you like I know my bugs. Not long after, the couple arrives at the serene Eden Lake, whose view leaves them awestruck. Following this, they bask in the sun while cuddling with each other. However, their romantic time is soon interrupted by the arrival of a group of rowdy teenage boys and their dog. They bully Adam and kick him away from the scene. Despite this, the couple decides decides to stay put and endure their loud music instead of instigating trouble. Jenny closes her eyes to take a nap while basking in the sun. However, she's startled awake by the group's Rottweiler. A short while later, Steve goes for a dip when the dog barks at Jenny one more time. Unable to tolerate this, he confronts the teenagers, asking them to turn their music volume down and take care of their dog. However, the boys refuse to comply. Instead, their leader, Brett, disrespectfully argues and sends him away. Later on, one of the group members checks Jenny out using binoculars. This makes her feel really uncomfortable, so she covers herself. Sometime later, the rowdy gang leaves, but one of them rudely flashes his dong while passing them. Check it out! <laughs> In the aftermath, Steve sets up the tent while Jenny gathers some wood for their overnight stay. During this, she hears rustling noises from a distance, but opts not to pay attention to it. That night, while enjoying the campfire, Jenny again hears the sounds emanating from the woods. She tells this to her boyfriend, but he reassures her that there is nothing to worry about. The Rottweiler and his sidekick Dong Boy have gone home. The following morning, Steve and Jenny wake up to find their food supplies infested with insects. Now that they have no food to eat, they decide to drive to a nearby restaurant to satisfy their hunger. But as they proceed to drive away, they run over an empty bottle the hooligans left behind, which causes their tires to go flat. Steve then grabs a tool and manages to fix the tire before setting off. As they arrive at the town, Steve sees the unruly teens riding around on their bicycles. Furious, he opts to chase them, but they enter a private property and hide. Following this, the couple visits the diner, where Steve asks the waitress about the group of kids. However, she simply brushes off his concern, claiming that they're not her kids. After their breakfast, Steve spots several bicycles sprawled out on the front lawn of a house, believing it to be the teen's house. He decides to head inside and complain about their activities to their parents. As he walks into the premises, he finds the the door open and makes his way inside, asking if there is anyone there. The homeowner soon arrives, and he happens to be Brett's father. Steve realizes that he's a hot-tempered man, so he quickly makes his way out of the house via a window, narrowly evading capture. He then hurries back to the car, and the two drive back to the lake. Later, Steve decides to go scuba diving, while Jenny takes a nap on the shore. Upon returning back, he prepares to propose to her, but just as he's about to do so, Jenny realizes that their bag can containing their phones, wallets, and car keys is missing. They then frantically run towards their parking spot, only to discover that their vehicle is gone too. Left with no other option, the duo make their way towards the town on foot. On their way, they narrowly avoid being hit by their own car, which is being driven recklessly by Brett. The psychopathic gang leader stops for a moment to smirk, this your ride? Before driving away. After this, the couple continues walking, and as the night falls, they come across the gang camp firing in the woods. Steve then approaches them to demand the return of his belongings. However, Brett says that he has no clue what he's talking about. At the same time, Steve's phone rings, so he proceeds forward to retrieve it. This instigates a scuffle between him and the gang, during which one of them pulls out a knife. Steve manages to grab the knife, and amid the brawl, he ends up stabbing Brett's 
dog. This breaks Brett down into tears, while Steve grabs his car keys and flees with Jenny. The couple gets into their vehicle and proceeds to drive away, but they're pursued by the gang. Unfortunately, the car gets stuck on a steep slope, and as a result, the gang catches up. They then start throwing stones at the vehicle, even breaking its headlights and windows. But just before they can break inside, Steve manages to get the car moving again. Following this, they race through the woods, but the darkness and the unclear driveway caused the car to crash into a pile of wood. Steve gets trapped by a tree branch, so he immediately orders Jenny to run away and get help. Heeding to his instructions, she escapes and manages to find a spot to hide, where she spends the night. In the morning, Jenny cautiously returns to the car, but finds her boyfriend gone. She then follows a trail of blood until she comes across the gang in a small clearing. To her horror, they have tied Steve to a rock with barbed wire and are torturing him brutally. Moreover, Brett orders each teen to stab him, so they will all be implicated. A female gang member, Paige, even records the torture on her phone as a backup. Upon realizing that they are about to kill him, Jenny uses the Bluetooth on her GPS to connect with Steve's phone. She dials 999 for help, but Brett notices and speculates that she must be close by. Sensing the imminent danger, Jenny flees, but she's spotted by the gang members, who then chase her on their bikes. Steve takes this opportunity to free himself and run away, despite the excruciating pain. Amidst the pursuit, Jenny grabs a log and uses it to make the gang members' bike crash. She continues running until she comes across a small mobile home. As she approaches it, she notices a radio phone inside, but it's out of her reach. Jenny tries to grab it, but the teenagers arrive there before she can do so. Having no place to hide, Jenny climbs to the roof and stays there until the gang leaves. One of the gang members then rushes to check on Steve, only to discover that he's escaped. Meanwhile, Steve goes to his vehicle to get some first aid kits. However, the car alarm goes off as soon as he opens its trunk. The sound alerts the teens, prompting them to rush towards them. Steve runs as fast as he can and eventually reunites with his girlfriend. Following this, the two continue their escape through the woods and soon end up in a small wooden cabin. Upon seeing that he's bleeding heavily, she attempts to apply some first aid. During this, she finds the engagement ring in his pocket, breaking her down in tears. She can't believe how cheap it looks. Shortly after, the teen gang shows up at the scene. They quickly enter the cabin, but only find bloodstains and leftovers of the first aid kit. Turns out that the couple have managed to hide under the cabin, submerging in water. After the teens leave, Jenny drags Steve out of the water and lays him down on the land. He can't move anymore due to his critical wound on his body. Sensing the urgency of the situation, Jenny decides to go to town and get help. Before departing, she dons the engagement ring, promising to come back for him. But as she runs away, she accidentally steps on a big spike, which penetrates her left leg. This causes her extreme pain, prompting her to let out a loud scream. But before the thugs can find her, Jenny somehow manages to crawl to a hidden space and removes the spike. As she lays down to regain her strength, she's suddenly approached by Adam. She requests him to lead her out of the woods, but the boy instead texts the gang members, revealing her location. Should have known that if this dick likes insects, he likes the gang too. Unfortunately, one of them immediately shows up and knocks her out from behind. Sometime later, Jenny wakes up to find herself tied to a large tree trunk beside her boyfriend who has already passed away. Brett then gathers some wood around them and pours on some gasoline, intending to burn them. His fellow gang members are noticeably disturbed, but they don't have enough guts to go against their leader. Brett instructs Adam to carry out the deed, also offering to accept him into the gang as his reward. Tired of feeling left out and bullied, the boy complies. Steve's body is burned first, while Paige films it, but in a stroke of luck, the rope tied to Jenny's body slowly burns through, providing her a chance to break free and escape. In Infuriated, Brett pours gasoline over Adam and uses him as bait to summon her back. But when Jenny ignores his warning, the ruthless leader burns the boy alive. Jenny continues to run and soon comes across a trail map, which she takes to find her way out. Right then, she hears the teens approaching, so she quickly hides in a filthy trash bin to evade capture. After they leave, she exits the bin and arms herself with a glass shard. She soon spots a gang member named Cooper from a mirror, who seems to be willing to help her. However, Jenny obviously 
perceives him as a threat and stabs him with her weapon. She instantly regrets her action, but she can do nothing other than watch him die. Despite being overwhelmed with guilt, she presses on to find a way out. That night, the rest of the gang members find Cooper's dead body. At this point, a gang member named Harry loses his cool and blames Brett for all of this. He even resorts to calling the police, but Brett, who isn't ready to be imprisoned, beats him to death. Wow, this is ridiculous. Upon witnessing this, Paige runs away, seemingly terrified by his violent behavior. In the meantime, Jenny finally reaches the road, where she manages to flag down a van. She gets in and frantically tells the driver to drive her to town, but the latter mentions that he's looking for his brother, who is also in the forest. Jenny soon figures out that his brother is one of the gang members. As a result, while the driver gets out to call for his brother, she steals the van and flees the scene in a fit of vengeful rage. She then runs over Paige without any remorse. A while later, Jenny makes it to town, but she's so weak that she's unable to focus on driving. Due to this, she crashes into the front garden of a house amidst an ongoing party. When she regains her consciousness, she seems a woman comforting her. But to her poor luck, Jenny notices some wall pictures and realizes that she's in Brett's house. What are the chances? Very low very low indeed. The rest of the people there are the parents of the gang members. In a state of panic, she asks to be shown to the toilet, where she grabs a razor blade for self-defense. By this point in time, Brett's father notices the crashed van and recognizes that it belongs to his younger son. This ensues commotion, and Brett's father kicks the door open. Jenny sees Brett outside, who convinces the rest of the parents that she and Steve are responsible for their children's death. Jenny begs them to call the police, but they all plan to make her pay for what happened. They taught these kids everything they know, after all. Turns out that the gang members' parents are just as psychotic and murderous as their kids knew it, and they protect them from prosecution. Jenny is then dragged outside by the parents, while Brett enters his room and shuts the door to block her screams. He deletes the videos of the gang's crimes from Paige's phone, puts on Steve's sunglasses, and stares blankly into a mirror. Chalk up another one for Brett and the boys, hell yeah! He then randomly does an impression of Tim Allen from Home Improvement. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.